Monitor vs. Merrimack, Clash of the Ironclads, A Close Read, Part 1 of 3. Today we're going to begin work by looking closely at a short story called Monitor vs. Merrimack, Clash of the Ironclads. We'll look at the plot and get the gist of the story. What's the author saying? We'll also determine how the author writes her story. This is often referred to as author's craft. We'll write notes in the margins, on post-it notes, or in a journal. Then we'll draw conclusions based on some of our observations. Why did the author write this way? This process is sometimes referred to as close reading. So you'll need your text for close reading and the journal we use in school to write down your ideas. Turn to page 39 in your text for close reading. Before reading, take a look at the passage. Note the graphic elements. Read a paragraph or two to make the assessment. Is this a narrative or an informational piece of writing? I see that it has a narrator and it has illustrations. I think that it indicates a story or a narrative. Note, I'm using a copy of the text that you can get from your teacher. Because there are two margins, I can easily distinguish the notes that go for each purpose. Some of you will write your notes in the text itself. Some of you will use post-it notes. Use different colored pens or different colored post-its so you can identify which notes go with each purpose. The purpose for this first read is to get the gist of the passage. What does the text say? What happens? Begin by numbering the paragraphs. This will make it easier to organize the notes you put in your journal. As you read, stop at the end of each paragraph or section and write a word or phrase to summarize what's happening. Let me show you how it looks. Monitor versus Merrimack. First read. Will Randall stood on the deck of a strange boat, bundled up against the frigid winter air blowing off the icy water of New York Harbor. The tall, light-haired young man wore a heavy navy blue coat and thick woolen gloves complemented by a naval cap. But the freezing, raw February weather could not dampen his enthusiasm and excitement. He was a first-time sailor on the newest, most up-to-date ship in the Union Navy. So in the margin, I'm going to write, Will is a new Union sailor on a modern ship. Now you read the rest of the passage, taking notes of what happens as you go. After you finish, copy your notes into your journal as complete sentences. This can serve as a summary of the passage. Here are some text-dependent questions to answer in your journal. If you're working at home, find a classmate or an older person to talk to about your ideas. Monitor versus Merrimack, part two of three. Last class, we read the text for the first time. We focused on what happened. We got the gist of the passage. Today we're going to read it a second time. Now the purpose will be to focus on how the passage is written. This is oftentimes referred to as the author's craft. Think of point of view. Think of who's telling the story. When is dialogue used? Identify how the author uses the illustrations to promote understanding. Earlier in this unit you learned that historical fiction has common features. Look for and try to identify these features in today's text. Let me show you how it could look. Monitor versus Merrimack. Will Randall stood on the deck of a strange boat, bundled up against the frigid winter air blowing off the icy water of the New York Harbor. The tall, light-haired young man wore a heavy navy blue coat and thick woolen gloves, complemented by a naval cap but the freezing, raw February weather could not dampen his enthusiasm and excitement. He was a first-time sailor on the newest, most up-to-date ship in the Union Navy. 
So as I look at this, I know that oftentimes the writer puts an attention-grabbing beginning uh, to hook the reader's attention. And that's one of the features of a historical fiction. And the way the author has done it is by describing a main character, by giving lots and lots of details. And we want to find out who is this guy who's so excited that the weather doesn't bother him at all. We also notice that it's written in the third person. Uh, somebody, uh, there's a narrator who's not involved in the story who's telling it. Uh, and finally, we've gotten the setting. Right now, we're uh, in the, the time period is during the Civil War because he mentions the Union Navy. Um, it's winter. It's very, very cold. He's near the ocean. He's on a boat, on a strange boat. So we got a lot of information about the setting. Now you read the passage a second time, taking notes of the author's craft as you go. Here are some text-dependent questions. Answer them in your journal. If you're working at home, find a classmate or an older person to talk to about your ideas. Monitor versus Merrimack, part three of three. During our close reading, we've answered two questions, what was said and how it was said. We've made observations about what happened in the story and how that story was presented. We wrote these observations as notes in the margin, on different colored sticky notes, or in our journal with different colored pens. Now we want to move from observing the text to interpreting it. We want to answer the question, why did the author write this story, and why did she write it this way? We want to make conclusions based on our observations. Let me show you how I would do that. One observation I made is that the author uses dialogue for the first time in paragraph 12. This is when Will says he believes in the Union and he wants to fight. Because it's the first time dialogue is used, I know this is important to the author. The author's message seems to be a patriotic one. Keeping the union together is the right thing to do. I look at the interrelationships between the first use of dialogue and the appealing hero of the story to conclude what the author's message is. Here are two questions that require you to figure out why the author chose to include an element by interpreting what it represents. Go back to the text and look for the interrelationships between the two elements. Answer the questions in your journal. Use text evidence to support your work. If you're working at home, Find a classmate or an older person to talk to about your ideas.